Hello, this is your board speaking. Today we're going to be talking about ePortfolios. ePortfolios are a great way to begin curating your brand. They're essentially a culmination of all your best work, skills, and strengths. We're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to make your portfolio the best that it can be. Today we'll be seeing some of our examples of our own portfolios as well as some insight on how we created our own. So an e-portfolio is basically a visual representation of your ability, skills, and knowledge that you want to put out to your future employers. It's a tangible collection of your progress, your achievements, and your contributions to all of your classes that you have taken during PR and the experience that you have acquired. And it provides evidence of your potential by demonstrating your accomplishments as well. And so what does a portfolio do? Um, your portfolio allows employers to see a more in-depth look of you as a professional. It allows you to showcase your personality and who you are as a candidate for a job, aside from the written words that you provide on your resume. And it lets employers know if you fit well with their culture and their values. And so pretty much a digital portfolio visual, it visually showcases different samples of your work um, that your resume outlines, but doesn't necessarily show. Um, and it helps you establish your credibility so for example, as a creative, I showcase my art through videography and photography, and that lets employers know that I'm actually qualified and capable of the work that I claim I can do and have experience in. And it does not work as a replacement of a resume. It just, um, so it does not replace your resume, but supplements and goes along with your cover letter and resume. Okay, so um, one question a lot of us are faced with when we are creating a portfolio is what should this include? Well, first, you should know that all of the information provided in your e-portfolio should be employer focused. So make sure you're asking yourself, what can I do for the employer? <clears throat> how do my or how can my skills and experience add value to the employer? What skills, attributes, learning, etc. can I demonstrate um, that can be used in the employer's environment? Finding the answers to these questions will help with the development, clarity, and focus of your e-portfolio. Now, as for sections, you wanna make sure you have the following. You wanna have an introduction with a purpose, philosophy suitable to you. You wanna have your resume in there. You wanna have samples of work you've done, which can include blogs, anything you've done, PR writing classes, campaign proposals, any social media work, etc. Literally any work that you've done for PR would fit under this section. You can include accomplishments and awards. Testimonials and recommendations are always good too. And volunteer hours if you have some, it's always a good look. Um, another thing you wanna make sure your e-portfolio includes is the log for Blue House. So make a note of that because you will be graded on that. And whose cat is that? That's mine, I'm sorry. <laughs> Who wants to go outside? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, when creating your e-portfolio, it's important to remember that the portfolio should represent who you are and the kind of work you have done. It is also a great space to show off your creativity. So you should add images that are relevant to work that you have done and also include relevant documents so that the reader can visually see what you have accomplished. In addition, you should add small blurbs by your project you have chosen to include that describe what you did and maybe what you learn or skills you gain from it. For example, in my own portfolio, I have past PR work that I'm proud of and also a podcast I made for my senior project. The work I included is personal to me and my successes, but also show off the skills I have gained over the last few years while still representing my own brand. Okay. So the whole process as a whole is kind of confusing and it can be a little bit rough, but um, we're here to help you like get through it and we're going to help you, you know, figure it out. So here's a little like checklist um, of kind of like what would be the best way to go about um, creating your e-portfolio. So first you're going to want to think about why you're creating your e-portfolio. Whether you can apply to jobs, are you applying to internships, are you just creating it for this class specifically, like what is it for? Um, and then you're, once you figure out what it's for, then you think about what relevant information you should include. So if you're going to, for this class specifically, you would want to make sure you're including your time law, you're including, you know, all of those things that um, we already talked about, but you want to make sure that you are choosing it based off of what it's for, based on that purpose. 
um, next you're going to want to reflect on it. And so once you somewhat have like a rough draft of your e-portfolio, you're going to want to make sure it all looks the same. Um, meaning like your resume, a cover letter, your LinkedIn, like things like that. They all correlate. They all have maybe the same color schemes, things like that. And that's kind of like a, a thing that you can do at the end where you're like, okay, this all looks very similar. It's using the same fonts, all that. Um, and then after that, you're going to want to look at what's relevant and how can you relate this to the real world, getting a job, um, other opportunities or for this class. So um, how are you going to relate your e-portfolio to the real world and how is it going to influence and impact your own learning? Um, and then last, you're going to want to publish it. So you're going to want to share it. You're going to show it off. Um, you're going to use it to network. So when you're talking to an employer or um, possible internship person or, you know, you're submitting it for this class, be proud of it. You know, you worked really hard. This It's hard to create an e-portfolio and make it a good e-portfolio. So you're going to want to show it off. Um, and then this can also be a huge tool for networking. So once you have your e-portfolio, you can share that link and just be like, hey, visit my website. It has my resume. It has a cover letter. It has my picture about me. It has all these things about it. Then you don't have to sit there and be like, you know, you're not making these small conversations and being like, oh yeah, can I email you my resume? No, here's here's my e-portfolio, has everything you need. So um, yeah, all in all, that's pretty much you. the three main steps and then a little sub categories of what you wanna go through when you are creating your e-portfolio, just to make sure that, you know, everything that you're creating, you're not creating too much or too little. Awesome, and next we're going to go into sharing some of our e-portfolios. So I will stop sharing really quick. Okay, I need to fix the screen share options. Okay, so up next we have Emma's portfolio. Okay, so let me share my screen. Oh, I was on these. Um, so here is my e-portfolio. Um, you can see up here, I have all of my little selections and they all like you know the little cursor will change when I go hover over it because it's a button so here's my little about me it has my headshot that Kenzie took um I have all this and then my resume is linked right here so if I click on my resume it's gonna look the same as my website and then um I have a little contact sheet down here at the bottom so if I were to click contact it would actually just take me to this part of the page um and then for those of you that don't know, I am a part of university television production um, and I am a big part of it. And so I like showing that off and, you know, uh, linking some of my most proud work. So here's some of the things that um, you can like click on these and it will actually take you to a link. And then this, I created a YouTube playlist that has all of the episodes of our newsline that I directed, produced, or um, had like a really big part in. And then I have stuff from Blue House from my last semester in 113. So here was like a letter that I wrote, a blog post, and then my time log. So when you guys are filling out your ePortfolio, you should have a section for Blue House. Um, and this is where you will submit your time log. So at the end of the semester, you can see yours. And then I do have my senior seminar. So I did a little, you know, presentation about feminism and Disney films. So here's my little video and then my reflection page. And then, you know, you can go back to the home. So that's what mine looks like. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing. I think Delaney is next, so. Thank you, Emma. Yes, so to go to mine, this is my portfolio. So at the very beginning, you can see there's my face and then all of the stuff that I have accomplished over my Boise State career in the past two to three years. So if you go to website and content management, that's everything that I've basically done in Blue House um, from web and, being the web and branding director, obviously, and then working hands-on with PRSA Idaho. And then also doing branding guides and messaging frameworks. And there's a little bit more that I wanted to add on that as well, since my experience has obviously expanded since being the web and branding director. Um, and then going to the about page, you can see these are photos of um, things that I like outside of 
my professional career. So like I work at Dutch Bros, I really like Marvel and then I really enjoy hanging out and going out with friends. Um, this is my about page and just getting to know a little bit more about me. And then we already clicked on services and clients and then going to contact if you want to chat with me at all. It's easy. This will go straight to my email. That way I can reply instantly. And then also photography, which I've done and then resume. So as you can see, this is everything that has, I have showcased in the last two to three years of my experience. Awesome. Thank you, Delaney. And last we have Kenzie. All right, let me share my screen. Everyone, you can see it? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna bounce back between this portfolio, which is my current one, and then the one I submitted last semester for Blue House because I haven't fully updated my page. Um, but this is just my homepage some photos of me so you know what I look like um, and then it says creative soul the passion for visual storytelling and then if you would click on here it has a button that leads to my about page and then just some examples of my photography work a short little video reel of one of the projects that I did in videography and then I have a little contact so it has my email and my phone number and if you scroll back up you can click on portfolio and it will just say digital portfolio it gives a little bit about what I do as a creative and as a professional and within these, you click on this button, it'll take you to my projects page within um, photography. And then same with videography, it'll just showcase all of my examples of the projects that I've worked on. Um, and then if you head over to my about me page, I have my headshot and then kind of a more in-depth look of what I'm doing in college. And then below that, this is more about the reasoning and the purpose behind the work that I do and why I'm so passionate about it. And then if you click on resume, this is my updated resume that I just did and it fits my aesthetic. And then if you would click this button, it would let people um, download the PDF file of my resume. And then as everyone got to have a contact page. So you can just submit these and it will bring you straight to my email. So that is very useful. And then heading over to my other portfolio, this is my PR page that I had. So it kind of outlines Blue House Agency as a whole and my role last semester as a social media director. And then, Click on graphics. It just gives an example of some of the graphics that I developed for the team last semester. So some headshots, senior send off, spring enrollment, stuff like that. And then I have my blog post. If my computer will work. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the blogs that I created um, last semester for the website. And then last but not least, oh no, actually there's two more things. <laughs> so I included our fall 2020 deliverable. Oh, it could show that I made a presentation online. Shout out Canva. Um, so that was our deliverable from last semester. And then last but not least on this page, we have the time log, which as Emma touched on, this is how you will be um, submitting all of your hours. And then lastly, I have my services page, which just goes into my creative services, like Delaney said. So I have photography, videography, and various media such as web design, social media, et cetera. So all in all, you just really want to show your personal brand and showcase your personality while also showing employers your capabilities as a candidate. And that is my portfolio. Awesome. Thank you, Kenzie. Um, so this is basically just a culmination of e-portfolios, everything about them, our e-portfolios. And as always, if you guys have any questions, shoot us an email, talk to Christine, any of the board, and we are happy to help. Thank you.